Well, welcome. Thank you, Craig. Um, thanks for joining us in this series of talking to industry specialists. Um, we at Abacus are always trying to help our customers and, and uh, trying to get them to increase their sales and, and no better person to speak to than yourself, who we see as a specialist and expert in the field of physical marketing. Um, yeah. Just to give our audience a brief intro about you, I um, understand that you used to be a chartered accountant at PwC before you then uh, worked in a printing and distribution company before eventually starting your own business. So maybe if you could just um, spend a few moments to take us on the journey of how you got there. Okay, thank, thanks for the invite anyway, Peter. And the uh, nice. situation is, is that, um, yeah, PwC learned to be a good accountant, a great accountant, but uh, it's a little bit boring if you're uh, wanting to grow businesses. Uh, so we, um, I changed my career halfway through life and uh, ran a print distribution business and they, they specialised in just only letterbox distribution uh, and was a type of churn and burn business, which I didn't like. Um, they would get a client in, they'd do 5,000 flies and really didn't care. They'd design it, print it, deliver it and move on to the next one. But uh, I met up with a great friend of mine who became my business partner at Bjorn Barrett. And uh, with Bjorn and I, we uh, take a different philosophy. We, we believe in helping our clients. We, we think the physical flyer is still very valuable. And uh, gee, these times we're going through right now with COVID-19, we've noticed how many flyers are in letterboxes right now. It's uh, mm. even though there's lots of people online, with the flyer, the physical flyer, you've got to do something with it. You either put it in the bin or you read it. Yep. Therefore, it's not like digital where it can be just a delete if it's on an email. Uh, so we know you've got to do something with that flyer. So we took a decision um, with Marketing Push, our company, to create three divisions. And today we're mainly focusing on Letterbox Push, uh, which is physical flyers. Yeah. Uh, and with physical flyers, we, we have the two divisions being letterbox push, parcel push. Letterbox push is for local area marketing for your, for, your, for your clients, as well as parcel push is for anyone who wants to do national marketing through the insertion of a physical flyer in a parcel, usually okay. out via online retailers. But today, if we can look at letterbox push and local area marketing, it'd be great to give some of your clients some insights of what we do and what we read. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, I guess one of the first things um, customers would think of or would be possibly, um, hey, letterbox push um, mail distribution isn't a thing of the past, isn't it? Like time of the dinosaurs. Who, who looks at physical mail these days? Isn't it all about digital marketing and then social media and emails, you know? Well, who, who prints stuff? Who reads stuff these days? Well, yeah, I, I think that's a general question many, many times I've been asked. Um, we take the attitude, and we know our clients and advertisers do, is that you've got to do something with this flyer. So in other words, if you have something physical, you have to do something with it. So we really think that with letterbox distribution, you've got to have a flyer which has got something more attractive than just something which is a catalogue for one of the big supermarkets, which is there for a purpose, but these flyers um, are still used. And, and it's really interesting that, you know, our most successful clients in say the real estate sector or the pizza franchise mm. sector or the little restaurant takeaway delivery service sector, they're all repeat marketing via a flyer in their local targeted area. Um, I'd love to go through some examples of what, what, your clients should think about, but it's this repeat marketing with a flyer. It's a very cost-effective way to get a physical flyer in someone's hands. Okay. So when you say repeat, you're not talking about just a once-off campaign. You need to keep, you might say minimum of five um, distributions or something like that. Yeah. So, so example, we have clients who come to us and say, Craig, we want to distribute 20,000 flyers and they're a little uh, business in a little neighborhood. And we know there's 4,000 targeted homes or, or apartments in that area, we would say to them, look, let's consider five runs of 4,000 initially around your, around your uh, business. So as we get your branding, get your name, get the repetitiveness out there, it's a, um, um, something where a lot of clients get it wrong. They think, oh, let's just smash the greater market 
with a lot of flyers, but that doesn't work. It can work, obviously, if you have big pockets and can redo that big distribution on a regular basis. We, we, we really focus on local area repeat marketing. Um, I think if we look at real estates, not in the point of sale example, but real estates who focus in one area, repeat flyers in those areas become the most successful. And I think we could probably say that the same with pizza chains, um, takeaway stores, Chinese operations, in oh. you know, lots of little restaurants which just focus in their target area and repeat, repeat, repeat. Yeah. Is there any way where you could possibly um, uh, me measure that return on investment? So, I mean, yeah. digitally marketing, you can say, you know, cost per click is X amount and I spent this much and this is a return I got. How do you actually measure what so, increased traffic you get in, in the flyers? So I'm just looking at a current flyer we're doing for a client right now and they've just launched a new app. And part mm -hmm. of the process on that flyer is, is that the new app, you get free delivery and exclusive deals. So now we're watching traffic going to that new app to see we will put the flyer out into the marketplace. We'll then advise the client it's gone in Monday and by Wednesday we hope to see some more traffic going to that application. But the other things we do is we have dedicated landing pages for, for clients on their, on their flyers. But again, that can be costly. So again, we're not here to spend money or waste money. So we would think about um, we can get a unique 1300 or 1800 or phone line okay. where we actually get a report. We, we yeah. sign up clients on a very minimal monthly cost. And what happens is the, the flyer has a specific mobile number or number on it. And then we'll get a report at the end of the month showing how many calls came in. So then we know yeah. that traffic is coming in that way. Now that's gain all through the technology being a flyer, but using new technology in sync with it. So as we yeah. can see what's happening. That makes sense. That makes, yeah, makes complete sense. Um, and what particular strategies would you advise? I mean, maybe particularly okay. in this time, you know, well, or in general and, and maybe has the strategy changed now? Yeah, look, um, we're extremely busy, which is great, but it's under the circumstances of a sad event being COVID-19. But, um, the situation is, is we have clients who had uh, very successful businesses, restaurants, uh, who now have become takeaway and home delivery businesses. So the first thing is we got flyers out for clients to make sure that their customers can buy their same product, but prepared for pickup or prepared for home delivery. But what we did with a client is we, we created a DL flyer very quickly, DL being a, a third of an A4 page, double-sided. We always believe on double-sided because when it goes into a letterbox, the print cost is not much more to print both sides and you're getting at least not a white piece of paper in a letterbox. Yeah. The situation is, is we put something straight out. Then what we've done is we then said, we think you now need to put a combo in place. So we're going back out into that same marketplace where we dropped the first fly with a combo. So not just a meal, a meal and a drink for that, for that restaurant and that now takeaway home delivery business. And then the next thing is we'll do is we'll probably go out and, and, and promote a refer a friend. Mm -hmm. Again, simple strategies, but strategies in a, in a logical way. Get the name out, then put something in the offer, then put something else in the offer. And we try and build those strategies, those campaigns for a client over a number of months normally, but obviously we're working on weeks for this moment. Um, the clients who, who really need to keep their name out there in the marketplace. Um, and so, yeah, so they're the, just the basic strategies we work with our clients. Um, we always try and get a call to action on a flyer. Now the call yeah. to action depends. Um, the call to action can be simply the combo where you save so much if you buy two items at once, or it could be if you spend a certain amount of money you'll get a discount off your checkout or on purchase. Um, mm -hmm. The situation is, is that we, we sometimes make it like a limited offer by doing two ways. The first 100 calls or the first 10 calls or the first 10 orders, or we put a deadline on the flyer. We don't ever leave it open forever. Um, mm -hmm. We try and make that urgency become through that flyer as well. Cool. That sounds good. What, what does a typical campaign cost someone? Uh, look, 
to print just a very basic number, 10,000 flyers, DL flyers, double-sided, yep. might cost $400 plus GST. Yep. And to distribute that might cost 10,000 flyers, might cost $900 plus GST. So it's, you know, a $1,300, $1,400 campaign. Sure. We have an in-house designer, which we're happy to have clients submit their artwork to us and we're happy to print and run that for them. Or we're happy to have a little look at it if we need to do a couple of tweaks on discussion. Um, no problem, we won't charge. You know, we may charge $30, $40 just to do a bit of opening up. Yeah. Um, just a minor cost, but we prefer to have a perfect flyer to test the market. And yeah. then the, the other comment there, Peter, is that we always like to try and do A-B testing as we're running flyers. Okay. Yep. Um, a different offer or a different design and see which one gets us the results. So do you uh, A, B like every second house or do you do an A in one particular area and a B in um, one particular area? We, we've done both. We've done okay. both. Okay. So yep. it really do, yeah. And again, we work on a client who we do letterbox distribution nationally for them. So Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Canberra, everywhere. Um, sure. And what we do is one month we might do a flyer, then the next month we might do a flyer with a offer on it, then we might do another month. So we're just repeating again, but bring offers. But then we have other clients who will do A-B tests where we'll do a print run for us at 10,000. We can be printing 5,000 and 5,000 together mm. and same cost as if it's just 10,000 as one flyer. So we can A-B test um, on those quantities. So we do two different flyers and out they go with our posty network. Um, and they're just going into random houses or we can go into certain suburbs as well. So one of our great clients of, uh, has created a handwritten style of flyer where okay. we actually handwrite the suburb in on the flyer. So when we're printing that for that client, it's really specific to their local area, but it's a national business, but it makes it feel like it's been handwritten by a team member who lives in that area uh, promoting that business, even though it's a national business. So, so someone actually physically handwrites on each flyer. It's not just a printed handwriting. A little secret of the trade is we've got okay. some pretty good software, which may look... Okay, gotcha. <laughs> but, 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 but yes, um, yes, yeah, yes. We, can, yeah. we can make it... We can uh, when we have actually done... Hand, yeah. and, and one very good example, in the bushfires of this uh, last Christmas yeah. period, yep. we had a shed... Uh, client who did sheds and they really had been helping a lot of the people in these affected communities and they wanted a handwritten flyer to go out into those communities to say we've helped we're here to continue to help and please you know look us up and here's an offer we can give you and it was all handwritten and it performed very well for that client so um again that's you know everyone thinks it's a color dl flyer a printed nice printed a handwritten flyer looks like it's been done from home um, but, you know, the colour flies, if we're going to use colour flies, which most, most are, let's make them stand out. Let's make them have a call to action. Let's try and put um, something special. Um, so I'll, I'll just, I'm just looking at one right now who's a client who has, um, uh, it's a bit hard to see, but we attach a little uh, tea bag to this client's fly. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, now, th that is a cost, but again, um, through our connections, we have people in, you know, in, um, in, in, in disability services helping us uh, oh. do around things, keeping people happy and working and that. And even, you know, even my own personal card now is not a business card anymore. It was a business card, but now we attach a little pack of Tic Tacs on that, mm. um, a little pack, just to, when you hand that over to a client with your business card, um, yep. And there's something, a little gift on there, that, that that's a very good point which we can do. Now, that, that, those are examples are uh, not for letterbox runs because of the sure. cost. But, you know, but again, we, we, we can have the, the flyer go out, which is in the case of the tea bag, without something attached. And then yeah. when things need to be attached, we can attach those things. So Is it my imagination or... I, uh, I'm going to show my age, but I remember when I was a kid... Um, I used to see more things in the letterbox of letterbox drops of, of little gifts and you know yeah. little pleasantries. But now I, I can't remember the last time I saw something like that um, in the letterbox. Has that has things changed? Yeah. Th things have changed a little bit. We we actually are inserting those tea bags into online retailers through Parcel Push right now. Yeah. Um, I suppose um, 
Yeah, the, the, the big conglomerates which used to do that were like, I think, Colgate, Toothpaste. Um, yeah, I remember. I remember. So I don't yeah, give yeah, away too much of me, me being mischievous as a kid, but I remember yeah. possibly even going to neighbours' letterboxes yeah. and, and taking yeah. advantage of the things that we got. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's probably part of the reasoning that's maybe slowed up a little bit. But we actually, as a business, we do insert samples into online retailer parcels through Parcel Push, but Letterbox Push, if a client's got something which they're happy for us to uh, deliver at the same mm -hmm. time, attached or unattached, um, you know, a lot of clients right now are doing magnets with us. Um, obviously doing magnets, you say? Magnets, yeah. Yep. Yep. Business card size. At, okay. at, um, at, at year end, um, we do a lot of calendar magnets with a little mm -hmm. magnet attached. Um, and again, when those clients do that, we still get them to print on the back, even though we're going to stick a little magnet on there through our uh, manufacture process, because not everyone will put it on their fridge. They'll put it into their drawer. And again, why we'll have a white bit of paper in their kitchen drawer, that fourth okay. down, or all the... Interesting. Yeah, so... I think I have a few plumbers or real estate agent <laughs> magnets on my fridge. I'm <laughs> looking at my fridge in the office here, and yeah, it's covered. And, uh, but again, uh, yeah. you know, magnets are like something which is a little bit... But again, there is cost factors. And again, we, we can offer clients different quality as in thickness, magnetization, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. How it is letterbox, you, you wouldn't spend, um, again, we just think the magnets is just a support to your regular yeah. program of what you're doing. And uh, yeah. Um, yeah. What, what would you say would be the most um, successful campaign that you've seen or experienced? Um, most successful campaign we ever did was through for a wine company. Mm -hmm. um, we were distributing uh, a wine company flyer where they were offering, and uh, by memory it was like 25 or 30% off uh, driving them to their online store. Okay. The online store with that discount was cheaper than the Dan Murphys of the world. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they got inundated with orders, and I think they created a little bit of havoc within the, 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 the sector. Yeah. You know, the they're, they're supplying Dan Murphy's, but Dan Murphy's weren't able to compete on price. So we had to stop yeah. that campaign. That was uh, an interesting time. But I think the call to action is the key thing. Okay. Uh, with, with Peter, it doesn't have to be a lot, but it has to be something thought out for each and every client. Um, mm -hmm. We all know um, the local Thai or the local Chinese, the local Indian restaurant 20, 30 years ago would give you a free mini spring roll or a free mm. you know, whatever if you spent as much money. That, that still is valid, um, but something better is always um, uh, more interesting um, for a customer nowadays. Uh, yeah. um, like I, I know, you know, uh, we know of one client where they're supplying cheese and wine and they're now running a Zoom uh, cheese and wine um, get together on a Saturday night and whoever wants to, whoever buys that combo has the chance to go in on a Zoom call. Yeah. And, you know, like a dinner party where you're doing yeah. wine tasting, cheese tasting. You know, you've got to think outside the square a little bit. And so we're doing that sort of work always for clients if you can do something a little bit different. Sounds great. That's really good. Yeah. Um, well, that's been really insightful. Um, thank you so much for your time today, Craig. I'm yeah, I'd really just, like, just like how, to close, close yeah. off if I can. How do customers reach out to you? How do, how yeah, it's, it's just what I'd like the message to your clients is, is that we're not here to spend your money. We're here to make your money become an investment into your business. So, mm -hmm. yes, we enjoy big quality, quantity jobs, but reality is we can start very small and build. So we've done that for several years now. We've started with very small clients and just started and doing things. It's got to the next level, but always we're focused on the flyer to make sure it's got a call to action, it's something different, and if it can repeat in a campaign, which also leads into the digital side of most clients' businesses as, a, as, as the next level. So driving them to the restaurant, driving them to the takeaway store or driving them to their online stores. Yeah. Letterbox works in conjunction with that, driving that traffic. And yeah. obviously um, that's another conversation. But reality is, yeah, flyers still are appreciated by most clients. And uh, look, yeah, we, we're happy to help with design and print and distribution whenever a client needs it. For well, sure. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, we'll post the details of your oh, business as well. Yeah, but, yeah. But, well, we love, I love this. I love 
agree with the sector. So I love the sector and happy to help most clients all of the time, you know, just uh, okay. thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thanks so much, Craig. Thanks. 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 Than